Welcome back, everyone. We're joined now live by the police officer who signed off on the dot-com operation, Assistant Police Commissioner Malcolm Burgess. It's great to have you on the show, Assistant Commissioner. Thank you so much for joining us. Why Good to were, be here. Thank you. Why were 70 officers plus two helicopters, members of the Special Tactics Group, members of the Armed Defenders Squad, dogs, and so on and so forth, required to arrest this man? Well, perhaps we could start with the 70-odd officers. Um, there weren't 70-odd officers uh, at Kim.com's property. How many were there in total? There were 70-odd there were officers um, distributed across a number of properties, uh, executing up to 10 search warrants during the course of the day. So how many were there um, at Kim.com's property? Were, at, the numbers varied. There were 20 or 30 initially uh, to, to, to seize the place. Um, and thereafter there were a team of searches that came through once, the, once we had control of the place. Can we confirm who they you, were made of? back to your other... Sure, sure. Well, one thing, can we confirm that the Special Tactics Group members were there and the Armed Defenders personnel were there? We had SDG and AOS staff on, on the initial uh, teams into the property. And they are the most um, highly we're... trained uh, and combat ready police officers in New Zealand, aren't they? They're very highly trained sure. staff. The, yeah. the reason those staff were there was um, we'd carried out a risk assessment. Um, we had tried to identify the best way that we could um, get to this property, to get into this property, uh, to secure the, the people, to do it safely for our staff and for the people that were there, uh, to prevent evidence being destroyed or otherwise gotten rid of. Um, based on the intelligence that we had, uh, any attempt by us to tap on the door and uh, um, enter by that means um, was going to be delayed. Uh, our assessment indicated that there was the potential for firearms at the address. Um, in fact, that Th proved were, to be the case. There were firearms. Yeah, there were two firearms yes. at the address, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so we we did a risk assessment. We tried to work out the best way of getting in there without. Um, compromising the search warrant or the safety of the people either in the property or of our staff. Um, and uh, after examining a number of options, um, the one that we went with was determined the best tactic. OK, so you were worried in part about the destruction of evidence, some kind of button or computer program or instruction which would destroy hard drives, which would take out evidence that the prosecution would like to use against Kim.com. But it took you somewhere in the region of half an hour to get to Kim.com. Surely if he was going to do that, he would have done it. Well, I guess um, those are all things we know now. Um, when we made our assessment, we did it on the best intelligence that we had available. So that intelligence us. was and incorrect? The, so that intelligence was on, incorrect? I don't, I, don't, I don't think the intelligence was incorrect. I did did Kim.com destroy evidence in the 30 to 35 minutes it took you to find him in that red room? I think Kim.com was in, a, in an upstairs room that probably didn't have the ability to, uh, to tamper with evidence. So he couldn't um, make a phone and, call and to someone far, else and ask them as, to do so? As far as I am aware, he did not tamper with any okay. evidence. But those, those are things we know now when we made our risk assessment, when we assessed what we needed to do. Sure. That was based on um, what we thought might, you know, what the possibilities could be. And, and clearly safety, destruction of evidence, disposal of, of evidence, um, were things that we took into account when we determined what our tactics would be. Absolutely. Can we turn to the safety thing now? Is it a true story that you sent a lone police officer to the house just the previous day, armed with some form of pen cam, to walk around and record what he could see there, and he was greeted so warmly that he was offered lunch by Kim.com? Is that a true story? There was an officer that went to the address on, uh, I think, on two earlier occasions, actually. And one um, was the previous was at, day? That was, that was at the behest of Mr. Dotcom and in you, the first did instance. You, did you have such and, concerns and for his indeed. safety that you had to send in members of the special tactics group with him? As I said, on the occasion that the, uh, uh, the other police officer went there, it was at the behest of Mr. Dotcom. Um, I think that's quite a, a different scenario to one where the police are, uh, are arriving with search warrants and arrest warrants for Mr Dotcom. Sure. Um, the, the, the visit by the other officer was a completely different kettle of fish. It was incredibly benign um, interaction between the two, the two parties and to draw a parallel, I, I just don't think you can, frankly. OK, so do you think in hindsight it was over the top to send in so many officers with so many guns 
And I wonder if you could give me a precedent in New Zealand in terms of white collar crime. Has there ever been anything like this before, ever, in New Zealand history? Well, I don't think there's been uh, an incident quite the same as this, but sure. I think um, you confront each incident um, based on the intelli intelligence that you have, the evidence that you have. Uh, you make a risk assessment, you try and identify the best way that you can um, effect, effect your search warrant. And um, in this instance, the tactics that we chose enabled us to gain control of the property in a relatively short space of time without any uh, um, risk to the personal safety of police staff or, or frankly, for the risk to the people that were uh, inside the property. Absolutely. There is, of course, a number of security cameras there, and one I've seen shoots out over that entire concourse and was recording that morning and would have recorded everything that unfolded where most of the action was out on the concourse. Are yeah. you prepared to release that footage, given that it has absolutely no influence whatsoever either on the extradition proceedings or any trial that may or may not follow? Well, I'm not sure whether we have that footage, so um, whether I'd release it or not sure. is probably a moot point. OK. It was um, on the service I mean, you removed. We are, we are reasonably satisfied um, that um, you know, we were operating in an environment where there were um, multiple cameras. Um, we yeah. were well aware of the fact that there were, there were several rings of security, if you like, around uh, this property. And one of those rings of security were CCTV cameras. Absolutely. So um, Absolutely. I think we were very aware of the fact that uh, the actions of police staff were likely to have been recorded. OK. Uh, the FBI, of course, have been very actively involved. In fact, um, we, 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 we have a couple of graphics which show that they were uh, trumpeting uh, this on their website, Justice Department charges leaders of mega upload with widespread online copyright infringement. That is actually on the FBI website. They say this action is among the largest criminal case, uh, criminal copyright cases ever brought by the United States. Are they paying you for this work? Will New Zealand bill them for this, or is this something we do under some kind of treaty with the US? Um, the, the request from the United States Authority was in the form of a mutual assistance request. Sure. Um, th that's a facility that's available to them to ask us for help. Uh, it's a facility that's available to us um, to ask Did other they... jurisdictions for their help. Absolutely. Do they have any influence over the scale or scope of the operation? Because they were in New Zealand prior to it, weren't they? And you have been talking to them for some time. Um, the FBI had no involvement with... Um, the, the tactical decisions made sure. um, around this operation. OK. In short then, Assistant Commissioner Malcolm Burgess, you feel this was fair, reasonable, and you're happy with the events of the morning? Uh, I'm satisfied that we took the best tactical option we had available to us to secure the people we needed to secure uh, as quickly and efficiently as we could and as safely as we could, um, and that that's how this all played out. Assistant Commissioner Malcolm Burgess, thank you very much indeed for your time this evening. We really do appreciate you coming in. My pleasure. Right, Assistant Commissioner Burgess is still with us in the Wellington studio, and the reason is he's brought this vest in, which he is holding up. Assistant Commissioner Burgess, you've brought this in because you give us your word that every armed police officer at the DOM.com mansion was wearing that. This is the ballistic vest that the staff at the DOM.com mansion were wearing. Because yes. the people I've spoken to there say some of the officers weren't wearing those vests. You say they all were. All of the armed police officers were wearing ballistic vests. OK. Assistant Commissioner Burgess, thank, thank you very much indeed.